Tech Talk Tuesday. Tech Talk Tuesday. Tech Talk Tuesday. Tech Talk Tuesday. Hello, and thank you for joining us for another 10 minute or less. Tech Talk Thursday. My name is Michael Weir. I'm Fortinet NSC 7 Certified Technical Account Manager for Fortinet at Ingram Micro. And I am here today to talk to you about sandboxing. Not the kind you play in your backyard. Sorry about that. So if it's not what you play, and that makes the question then, what is a sandbox? So a sandbox is something that takes potential threats to a network, typically things that could be viruses or malware, uh, things that are going to perform negative actions and activates them, or as we would say, detonates them in a controlled environment to try to see what they do, and then creates a verdict as to if they are good or bad. Problem. When we're talking about viruses, there's always a first person. There's always a patient zero. And the problem is, welcome to patient zero. Is it you? Here is an example of what you've probably heard on the news. <laughs> fell victim to a ransomware attack today. Here is their soon-to-be unemployed CIO on what happened. <laughs> Let's look at the numbers on this in terms of malware and what it costs people. Projected annual cost of malware in 2021 is a total of $6 trillion. That's a lot of zeros after that. And then for our small and medium businesses and small enterprise customers, an hour of cyber downtime is going to end up costing about $50,000 in lost revenue, lost work, wages, remediation, triage, just plain having hands on it to get it fixed. And the problem with all this, and this is sort of a background thing, is that there is usually 191 days between a cyber breach and its detection. And the longer it takes you to detect it, the more likely it is that it's going to be doing serious damage to your network. So let's take a look for a second and talk about how malware actually works. Malware is really a four-step process. First, it's going to get in. I mean, it's going to infect files, document links, uh, maybe be file list, somehow get into process, etc., onto your machine. Next, it gets ready. So most of these things are in some way programmed to spread laterally and wait for a queue to start working. Once they get that queue, it's time to get to work. This is where the malware performs the bad actions as fast and as fully as possible. And then, of course, step number four is get out, which is either self-destruct or go back to dormancy, hopefully before it's ever been detected, so that the same thing could indeed do its job a second time. Now, the problem in all this is that new and evolving malware has to start somewhere. Maybe it will be you. No threat comes out of a vacuum. There's always somebody else putting out a new threat. And the downside to things that are signature-based or sometimes even heuristics-based detecting viruses is that when you're the first one, the detection is oftentimes pretty poor, if at all. The solution, then, is sandboxing. And you can sandbox potential threats from things like your gateways, your endpoints, your mail systems. These days, it's built into your web application firewalls, your ADCs. Uh, it's built in pretty much anything you can think of that has to do with cybersecurity will in some way, shape, or form connect to a sandbox, even if it's just through a sniffer or something along those lines. It will go in there somehow. So, let's see this in action. So to start out, we have an unknown potential threat identified by an antivirus program somewhere. And this is where our sandbox kicks in. It says, hey, have we seen this before? Is this familiar? Does it have a malware hash that we think we've seen before? Does it match any existing definition? Next, we have to say to ourselves, what does it look like would happen if we let it go? So this is where you get into looking at heuristics or code analysis, some kind of static analysis, saying, is there any part of this we recognize? Now, heuristics and things like that are subject to a lot of false positives. So most sandboxes will have a filter on them to say, all right, this is a quality, this is the criteria, this is some way in which we're going to mitigate our false positives. And if we still say this looks like it's malicious, then we say, well, Let's detonate a copy in a controlled environment. This is where a sandbox takes a file and puts it in a VM, and it runs actions on it. What were things that a user would do? They would click on it, open the file. Uh, the sandbox will do things like advance and go backwards through time. It'll click on random places in the screen, not just in the program. And it'll watch what happens to all these interactions, and then it's going to make a verdict. Your verdict could be, whew, good thing we did that, or everyone would have died. Destroy the original. Or your verdict could be, oh good, it's benign. Let's send the original on to its intended location. So now let's take a look at how that would actually happen inside a sandbox. So what you're seeing here is an example of something that was caught by the sandbox pre-filter, in this case, a static analysis of the code. 
So it's just a random file I had on my PC. You'll see that there's no behaviors detected. So you might look at where it says no behaviors detected and say, huh, well that means nothing happened. Well, the reason I know it's been caught by the static pre-filter on this is that you'll see, if you go down a little bit in those blanks, you'll see there's a rated by, and it says rated by AV scanner. So in this case, it was the AV scanner that said, hey, there's enough in this we recognize or recognize this hash or some way recognize this file to say, yep, this is malicious. We don't need to go any further. This one's getting tossed. Now, here's one that was actually done in the VM. Now, obviously, uh, I don't really have a lot of malicious files sitting around on my PC, so I set the uh, Forta client on my PC to send all of the files I downloaded, all executables, to the Forta sandbox, and then downloaded VMware Player. So that's how this happened. You'll notice now in rated by, this says it was rated by the VM engine, submitted by Forta client, like I just said, and this is how it came to its verdict. You'll see down here there's something that says indicator summary. These are the criteria that were used by the Forta sandbox, to decide the verdict on this file. You can see there was one that was low and the rest were generally clean, uh, that it did modify the registry. And all, all these things, the reason that these are marked uh, low, even though these are things that a malicious file could be doing, is because they're not doing it in like a malicious way. There's nothing adding up and saying this has a high enough threat score. So we can see behaviors. This was based on MITRE stuff, and it has an executable in its overlay. So that's what said we were going to do this gives our hash there. Now you'll see it says behaviors for Windows 7, X64, etc, etc. I just happen to have a copy of that sitting around for free. If you have a sandbox, such as a Forda sandbox, I recommend putting on a current version of Windows. And you'll see the 016 at the end means it has Office 16. I encourage you to have something that matches whatever you use. And once again, we see this list of behaviors. And then we get it broken down. The things that made it suspicious was the creation of these registry entries and the processes created and injected. Behavior summary is a summary of everything it did. And then we get down to the nitty gritty of the behavior details. You see here's all the created files. If you have a lot of time, that's something to read through. Here's all the deleted files. But you didn't realize so much stuff happened during an install. Renamed files. Modified files. Set attributes. Registry operations, and we go for created. And you can see here, I backed up a little bit. This is highlighted as one of the things that wasn't clean but was low risk, so this is something it took as an indicator. Then we have our deleted registry entries. Now we have our memory operations. This is handy for things that are processes that might just happen in the memory or are going to do other operations that aren't necessarily going to create changes on the disk. So, of course, we have our written and our related processes created and injected. Then we have this all scored out in the MITRE attack matrix by its various criteria, color-coded, of course. And then last, the engines and signatures that were available on the device itself. Now, on the Forda Sandbox, you can force certain file extensions to go to certain VMs. Obviously, you want to do things so that they go to their appropriate VM to be run, uh, but that's just what we're seeing here. So what's our call to action here? It's just make sure you have a sandbox somewhere in your network. If you're using Fortinet, which of course, as you've gathered right now, I like Fortinet, I'm certified, I recommend them. Uh, you can get Forda Sandbox Cloud for a number of devices. You can get it for the endpoint, for their mail device, for the firewall, uh, for the email, different places. You can, you can get Forda Sandbox Cloud linked to those, but really what you need to do is just make sure that there is something in your network that can do sandbox. And thank you very much for coming and watching. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me, Michael Weir at IngramMicro.com, and there is my work phone number. Otherwise, everybody have yourself a good day.